Hey guys, how you doing? This is JP Sari Kolia coming to you once again with another book review and this is actually the first review of 2019 and hopefully this is the start of many many books to come and this, that's the hope and that's the goal. But today I want to uh, review X-Men Bishop's Crossing, definitely one of 90's favorites. This is the introduction of, uh, in this case, Bishop into the X-Men, which is one of the greatest parts of this, uh, pretty much of the 90s, one of my favorite characters of all. But uh, I love the art here on this, if you can see X-Men Bishop's Crossing, uh, this has been recolored. This is Will's Potassio art, uh, really nice, I love the new coloring. Now here on the side you can see Marvel X-Men Bishop's Crossing, there's the face of Bishop right there. Now here in the back it says, welcome to the X-Men, Bishop. Uh, hope you survive the experience. Very nice introduction. Uh, collecting of Kenny X Men and number 281 to 293. Also, the X Men number 12 and 13. And material from X Men 10 and 11. Now, this on the digital version is very different than this version that you find of the, the physical version. Now, the digital version has doesn't have number 12 and 13, uh, which it really has nothing to do much mostly with the storyline. Um, they have only number eight, which is kind of like sad that it wasn't included here because number eight actually is a, a part where actually Bishop is accusing, of course, um, uh, Gambit of being pretty much the, the mutant that will uh, bring havoc to the mutants in the future. So it's not included here. If you have the previous uh, Omnibus Volume 2 by, uh, uh, in this case, Clis Clar Claremont and Jim Lee is going to be included there. Um, however, uh, this part, that part of that comic book, that issue is not included here, but that one doesn't have 12 and 13. This is included here. And also that one, there's material from 10 and 11 that is not included on that Omnibus. So technically this kind of, com they complement both, uh, they complement each other. Uh, before this goes into Executioner's Song. But uh, very cool, uh, as you can see when it came out, it was $49.99 in the US and $55.99 in Canada. Now removing the dust jacket, you can see there is an introduction. This is Future Shock, uh, an introduction to the whole story. Very cool. And then of course here the creators as a introduction for Wills Potassio, John Byrne, Scott Lovedale, Fabian Niciesa, Tom uh, Rainey, and R. Thever. This was done a few years ago when Marvel was not doing the, you know, the wraparound colorful art. Um, uh, this one is just the basic black. Here you have engraved uh, X-Men Bishop's Crossing. Nothing really major. Same on the side. It's in blue. Pretty cool. And there's nothing in the back. Now opening the book, as you can see, very simple, very subtle. Um, nothing major. Here right here, there's a listing. You have, of course, on the writers, you got Jim Lee. Wills Potassio again, John Byrne, Scott Lapdale, uh, Fabian Niciesa, Pencilers, you have Wills Potassio, John Romita Jr., Andy Kubert, Tom, uh, Tom Rainey, Art Thibbert, uh, with Rurik Tyler and Mark Texera. Then in the inks, you have Art Thibbert, Scott Williams, Vilsin Kievics, Hilary Barda, and Joseph Rubenstein with Carl Alstater, Al Milgram, Chris Ivey, Dan Pinochian, Buff Wysik, Mark Texera, and Trevor Scott, and so on and so on. Now, moving into the book, of course, this is, uh, I love this. This actually was the wraparound art of the art that came with the original issue, number 281. Uh, the introduction, of course, Desperate Alliance. Uh, I love this one. I really do. I love the art. I love Will's Potassio. Uh, Will's Potassio, in my opinion, was one of the greatest artists of the 90s. I, I love his art. Uh, it was very energetic. Like, look at this, the Sentinels. Very cool. I love it. Uh, very cool. Of course, this is Will's Potassio. During that time, there was, of course, there was a prior, uh, a few months prior to the creation of, um, of course, Image Comics. So there were a lot of people uh, participating into this book. So you have uh, Jim Lee and Will's Potassio. They're the plotting the book. And actually, John Byrne is putting all the words together. Uh, 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 you know, Art Thibbert is doing the inking. With, I, I, like, I love his inking. Very, very cool. And uh, so there's a lot of people involved in the process um, of creating things. Uh, of course, Will Potassio was the one doing the pencils. What I love about Will's, um, this is one of the arts, in my opinion, will look great. And Marvel decides to recolor. 
Uh, I think Wills will look phenomenal. In my opinion, Wills is the second closest um, to Jim Lee in style. Uh, they're very close friends. They, uh, uh, you know, Scott Williams was a great inker. Uh, they one of the greatest inkers, uh, pretty much for of all, of all times and modern times. Um, he, he, he was a good friend of, of Wills. They were friends in high school. But looking at the art, it's something that uh, about his perspective that is really fun. What I like about about him as an art act uh, as an as an artist is that he gives this perspective. He has a very specific style, very realistic, um, but he has dimension, uh, which some other artists, like I would say, um, during that time, artists like um, uh, Rob Liefeld didn't have. Uh, I think he was uh, Wills was a much better artist overall. And uh, this is one of the ones that will benefit uh, if it was recolor, in my opinion, uh, because it's so, you know, it's so on the edge. Uh, of course, limited by its time, limited by the coloring of the time. Uh, this will look great digitally, uh, you know, pretty much color again. It will be phenomenal. Even uh, re-ink again, it will be probably uh, really nice. Of course, it might be re-inked by the greatest, like Scott Williams. Uh, this one, of course, Scott Williams was doing the ink in here. Oh, no, that was art favored. Um, I think I, I just forgot, but look at that. Look at Colossus. I don't know if you can see it there. Um, very, very cool looking. This is the dimensions that it has. One of the arts, one of the secrets of drawing art, it's to uh, be able to create um, a proper scale, proper dimension. That's something that requires a lot of skill, requires a lot of um, training. And look at this. Love this cover. This is the introduction of Bishop right here. Love it. One of my favorite covers. If you have seen my review of the Bishop stat uh, statue by Bowen Designs, that's one of my favorite statues uh, from Bowen Designs. Love it. Uh, love it. It's, it's phenomenal. Uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, it's sculpted by the Kucharik brothers. Uh, one of my favorite of all times. Uh, I think from all the Bowen pieces I've been created, I think one of my favorite ones. But looking at this, Will's Potassium is now doing also the plotting. Uh, in this case, Jim Lee is no longer doing it. Uh, but I, Art Tipper is doing the inking, and John Byrne is doing the script, doing, doing the words. Um, I like it. Like I said, you can look again. Wills has a more clean look. You know, for some reason, of course, for many reasons, it has to do with family reasons, health reasons. He wasn't able to really become as popular as, I would say, um, any, um, as, a, you know, life felt. But in my opinion, uh, Wills Potassio was a much better artist. And um, you can see in his art, it wasn't perfect. But there, there's this energy, that cinetic energy that he has that is just phenomenal. Look at this. I love this, this just design here. There are things that he still doesn't do well, like, for example, the, as you can see, the, the, the elongated uh, neck. Uh, but, uh, of course, it's uh, our favor, which has ink, in, you know, ink in this. It really gives her more, uh, a much better dimension. And uh, that really reminds you, look at that ink here for a storm. It really reminds me that inking is a big part of art, and sometimes we we take that for granted. Most artists, or most people, I'm sorry, most fans, when they look at art and comic books, they think about the penciler. They don't think about the inker. But the inker really can make or break the art of any of any comic book. If you have a, a, a inker that overdoes the work, it might make it really muddy and look out of place and not as nice looking. Now, if you have an inker that knows the dimensions and actually works well with certain artists, some inkers work better with some artists than others. Uh, it depends. It's a team effort. I think that as an inker, your job is technically to to really find what is it that the artist is trying to uh, create, what image they're trying to create. You have to decipher the intention of their penciler, and um, and that's what really makes it. A difficult job, not for everyone. Not everyone can be a great inker. Their great inkers are not good pencilers, and their pencilers are terrible inkers. Uh, and it requires a lot of effort. Some people ink their own stuff, and it doesn't look great. Like John Byrne, I love John Byrne, but he was never the best inker. And when he started inking his own stuff, he wasn't that great. Um, it's when someone else was inking for him that really he shined, you know. And um, and that's that's very that's very true. Uh, particularly in recent years. Now, what you can see right here, one thing I like about this, uh, the, and of course, I'm just sort of amazed by the art. I love the expressions. Uh, I love the art. Like, again, like I'm saying, the dimension. Look at that, the angle. It really angles things well. 
it's uh, the perspective is well, well done. You can see that. You know, perspective is important because it gives dimension to the art. If you don't have good perspective, look at this. This angle is perfect. Then everything looks flat and uh, unanimated. You know, it looks like it's just painted on the wall and it's not, it's, it doesn't have any life. Now, when you give dimension to your art, look at this here, right here. Very good. When you give dimension to the art, it really gives gives that three dimensional feel, like you can hear right, uh, you can see right here, uh, that really makes it shine. I really love this one right here. Love that. You know, this this specific issue right here is really full of, of three dimensional feel. Uh, it's does the everything. The perspective is phenomenal. You can feel that you are in the room, like here. You are looking from above. You can see it like that. If you don't see it, if you don't have that dimension, it might look flat. It might look that they're standing up and this actually on, on the ceiling, but that's not true. You can see it because of the dimension, because the three-dimensional feel, you can feel that you're actually looking above, looking down. This is a secret that a lot of artists cannot manage well. This is something that only a few artists are, are really, that they really practice a lot can do it and can do it real well. And I think Wills Potassio is one of those that really knew how to do it well. Uh, and you can see right here. Here you can see a wizard a, a cover number eight uh, by Wills Potassio. Love this one. Bishop looks great. In my opinion, Wills was the best um, the drawing. Um, in this case, Bishop, but also Storm. Storm looks so beautiful. Uh, but look at this one. Um, the first part of this book, um, it's just a lot of the art. It's just Wills Potassio art, and um, it's very, very good. In my opinion. Now, sometimes the inking is not as good. Um, sometimes the ink, uh, depending on who is inking, because there's a lot of people involved in the process, might just, you know, not make it shine. But make no mistake, the art here is good. The colors might not be as uh, as, as, as clean, uh, of course, because this has been just remastered, not, re, you know, repainted. But the remastering gives a little more cleaner look. But definitely, it's, it's, it's very good. And I love this one. Uh, as you can see, Really like the panel layout. Uh, Will's kind of experiments with the panels. You're going to see through his comics. Sometimes he goes very, very clean, like here, which is good. He's not as, uh, it's not as aggressive. Uh, I love this one right here. Look at this one. I love the image of, um, I always like this one. I just love Bishop, how he looks there. He looks great. I don't know, as a kid, I love, um, a teenager in this case, look at this one. I love when he, um, you know, Bishop, he was a cool character. I love him in the cartoons too, uh, but I love the, the, actually the action figure. I had an action figure of Bishop, which I always like. It, I don't know, he was just a cool guy. This is another cover, Wizard for number 14. This is Art Thibbert, and look at that. I love this one. Uh, Art Thibbert, in my opinion, um, his art was very similar, very similar to Jim Lee. He was very close to Jim Lee. Uh, I think when, of course, when uh, he left, when Jim Lee left and Art Thiever took over the X-Men, he's he really injected that. He, he's always a bit more blocky, per se, but it's very, uh, it has that energy. It's not as good as uh, Jim Lee's art, but it's very, very close. Um, very close. Although Wills has that um, Jim Lee feel, he also has a lot of Mark Silvestri feel in his art. It's like a combination of both, which art is phenomenal. I think he does have that um, really sophisticated uh, Mark Silvestri style with the very explosive, very rounded feel of um, uh, Jim Lee, uh, all combined into one. But look at this one. Very cool. This again, um, Jim Lee is co-plotting this this story. Uh, he's still doing some co-plotting, uh, but I love this ink in here. Look at the face of, in this case, Colossus. This is well done. Look at this. Lines are really soft. They're subtle, but they really give that expression. Uh, tyrant, you know, he's really tired. He looks really tired there. And uh, this is very, very cool. And again, this is the panel layouts. I love the, the simplicity of the panel layout. Love this face right here from Storm. Um, it's very, very simple. But looking at that, look at uh, Archangel. He looks great. This is the part where he shines. The reason why uh, Wills, uh, in this case, left, um, uh, pretty much after this run, he left and he went with uh, Jim Lee and Marcel Vestry and the other guys to create Image Comics. He was one of the, the founding members. Um, but he didn't become a partner, uh, and that's because during that time in 1992, 
um, his sister got really sick, really sick. Look at this one, another The Year in Review at par Parody by Wills Potassio. Okay, very cool, another, this is actually now, um, you know, Scott Lobdell is taking over as a writer, he's doing the scripting. Um, Art Thibbert is doing the inking again, and of course, Jim Lee and Wills Potassio are doing the story arc. Uh, this is actually when um, uh, Byrne, Byrne decides to walk away. Uh, he, he, he left and um, look at this. I love the inking. Art Thiever is a great inker. I think for Wills Potassio, he was doing phenomenal. He was doing great, great inking for him. Um, so uh, again, when I was saying he decided to leave, um, look at this storm. I love this one. I'm telling you, I love the art here. Full of energy. A lot of 90s energy here. This is one of my favorite books. Besides the omnibuses, the Jim Lee omnibuses, uh, the ones that came out in the 90s, this is one of my favorite books, just art alone. The story is just 90s fair, which is not, made, no, not much to talk about. Uh, and this is Uncanny 287, and here is Scott Lovedale now takes over the writing part. He's on the Jim Lee still plotting here. Uh, some of his plots and initial story storyboards, but you have John Romita Jr. And this is when John Romita, of course, is doing his own thing. You know, when he's already doing that art that a lot of people love and hate. It's one of those that back in the early 90s where he started doing that, which sometimes is good, sometimes is not so good. Now, he has been, uh, Scott Williams is doing the inking, but also he's been assisted by um, uh, Sienkiewicz and other all, other uh, Ivy, Penotion, and Wysik. Uh, so they have the help here uh, on that matter. But you can see this, look at that. You know, sometimes it looks good, and sometimes it just looks not so great. Uh, you know, sometimes I like his art, his newer art, sometimes I don't. Uh, and this is the part where I feel that it was kind of off, because, of course, you already have in the art uh, to this point of uh, Wills Potassio. You know, you have Art Thibbert, and all of a sudden he comes with this style. We kind of throws everything off. I like consistency. I don't like when things are thrown off. I like when... He, uh, you know, I have no problem when he does his stuff and the way he does it, but when he comes and he injects his own thing, I just don't like it. I just, it throws me off because the stories, I want to, you know, I want the consistency of seeing the same art throughout the storyline. But, you know, everyone is different. Uh, sometimes the art is good and sometimes it just loses the impact in my opinion, like I'm this here, right here. Panels are extremely, like, you know, empty. You know, like, look at this. There's no... Here, there is no added uh, detail, which is sad because I, I would see like John Byrne adding detail, so much detail to his art panels. And it's not like he doesn't know how to do it because, of course, if you know Ramita Jr., he is definitely, he knows how to do it. He is a good artist. You know, if you go back to his older stuff, he had a much detail. But uh, a lot of people are accusing him of getting lazy in, in, in later years. Here's where you can see where he started changing things out for his own. Um, I don't think he's lazy. I just simply, I think he just simplified on his own. I don't know if he was on, on a tight schedule, but everything is very, very clean. And of course the inkers are just, they can do so much. You know, they already did, you know, you have a bunch of inkers here. And of course, the reason why this is, is, is you, you're, you're already seeing Jim Lee walking away. So technically, um, they pretty much have to do it on the, on, you're pretty much like this, you know, on, on a, in a minute, they have to come up with a storyline. And I think that's why you have so many people involved in the project. So they just did it just to keep the, the magazine running. Now you have um, uh, this one. I love this, this cover right here. But this is also uh, Wills Potassio. And uh, this is Andy Cooper. Um, as you can see, Andy Cooper, he has this. Uh, actually, uh, Sienkiewicz is doing the inking. And I love Sienkiewicz. I'm not gonna say the Andy did such a great job here, but St. Kevin's really um, gave it that extra flair with the inking. Uh, if you know St. Kevin's, um, he was very uh, sought out in the 80s and in the 90s. His art, uh, very dark, very art deco, uh, but um, he has this shadowy images. And his inking does give that, you know, he gives a lot of shadowy images which actually, they're phenomenal. They're, in my opinion, they're great for some of these characters and you can see right here. Really, really cool. It gives the extra dimension, a more darker tone. Uh, he has a little more mature tones. And look at this one's right here. Look at this face. I really like what St. Kivis was doing when he was inking this, this part of the book. But yeah, you can see right here, like this one right here. 
I like this image, the shadowy images around. This is extremely cool. Now, this is another Will's Potashi cover, which is my favorite. Of course, you, you see Storm Kiss and Forge. And um, I don't know, this is another favorite of mine. Pretty, pretty cool. This is the relationship that is going on between, kind of like a tr love triangle between um, Bishop and Storm and Forge. Kind of cool, kind of cool. Um, but yeah, this is very clean here again. This is when he's doing clean stuff. I don't know. I, I love wheels and going back to what I was saying earlier and I pretty much lost track of it. Um, the, the sister got sick, so he had to take care of the sister for a couple of years. Uh, he's from the Philippines and, um, uh, he grew up in the, in the, in, in New Mexico. And then he moved to, uh, San Diego, uh, where he pretty much lived, I think, uh, as a young adult. Uh, I was a teenager. He went to school there, and uh, Scott, uh, Will, Scott Williams was actually a friend from school. So very young too. Um, so he had to take care of his family, and that was an important thing to, for him to do. Uh, and of course, he came back, so he didn't have the chance to be um, pretty much a partner. Um, look, look this one. One of my favorite um, Storm covers of all time. Really love it. A friend of mine did a. As you know, uh, Skodobukia did a statue of Storm, uh, and it was, of course, sculpted by um, Eric Sosa. But a friend of mine also contracted Eric Sosa for a for a custom piece, just as a, a Storm 1-6 scale that uh, they has two sh change out heads, and one of them is inspired on this, on this, actually, this cover. Um, uh, you know, he wanted to have the Jim Lee head, but also wanted to have the change out head uh, uh, basing on the art of, of course, Will's Potassio, because Will's Potassio had an impact on the character, and um, is well reflected here. Look at this one again. The dimensions you can see in the air, you can see that you know this is something that you can see that people like, like again, Lifel didn't have that ability, uh, but of course, you know, Lifel was very blessed. I would say lucky, perhaps. To, to have admirers and people that really support him in his initial art when he left, of course, with Image Comics. Of course, um, you know, Will Spotashu had a chance. He produced Wet Works, where that was his work. Uh, he left Image Comics because of the situation with his sister, uh, came back years later. Um, then, of course, he was sick. Back He came back into comics in 2006 again. He was sick for a long time. He had uh, problems that prevented him from really doing much on his own. Um, so he was unable to draw for many, many years. Now he's back again, which is phenomenal. Love this one. Storm looks great here. Look at this one. This is Andy Kubert, and I love this Magneto. Well, there's so much star art here. Uh, Scott Lovedale, of course, written. That's uh, still doing the writing. Tom Rainey is the guest penciler here. I'm okay with Rainey. Uh, he's also from the the Kubert school. Um, not a fan, I would say, of the art here. Uh, the inking is good. But the art is a little uneven, um, and not necessarily in the right way. It's just uneven, uh, it's different, it changes, um, non-dimensional, gets a little cartoony, then gets too serious and realistic and unrealistic. Dimension-wise, it's not the greatest art. Um, of course, again, at this point, um, the, the artists are walking away, going to Image Comics, so of course, you have to fill in the gaps and you have to bring whatever. So you're already seeing that, that difference. But here you go. This is another one right here, and this is uh, uh, the the Rurik Tyler. That's another artist that they brought in. At this point, they're already gone, and uh, pretty much, the, you have to fill in the gaps. You know, you have to bring this artist. So the artist on this part, the stories are okay. Scott Lovedell is really, you know, really heating up with the the story, the story arcs, and all that stuff. But the art, it's not the greatest. And as you can see it right here. Now, these are not included in, these issues are not included in uh, in any of the previous collections. It's not included on the X-Men Volume 2 uh, Omnibus, and it's also not included on the Executioner Song or anything, uh, Fatal Attractions or anything that came after it. So, of course, it's kind of nice because it's here. Uh, again, it's uh, it's had some extra stuff. It's missing number eight, like I mentioned earlier. Then it goes into uh, the return of Longshot, and um, number this is X Men Ten and X Men Eleven. Um, these are included on the Omnibus by Jim Lee Volume Two. However, the the first part of the story, the main stories of those issues, are included in that Omnibus, but not the second part, which is included here. Um, Many stories uh, that only includes about Maverick are here, and uh, this is Mark Texera's art. Scott Lobdell still doing the writing. I always love, um, in this case, Maverick. Pretty cool character, and Mark Texera's art is just phenomenal, in my opinion. I love this 
darker tones. He does the ink in himself. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty heavy, pretty strong. Um, love it here. Really cool if you can see it. And uh, it's good. Now, these issues are not included. This is the ones that are not included in this in the in this case in any collections and they're included here so if you're a completionist definitely this is something that really adds to to one before he goes into executioner's song and then of course he moves on into um you know anything else fatal attractions but here uh you give number 12 uh pretty cool uh the artist fabian is yes doing the writing and art thibbert is actually the artist in this collection but um, I love Art. Again, Art Th uh, Thibbert, he really defined, he was very, very close to Jim Lee in style. And that's the reason why he was given the job to follow up in the footsteps. His art is not as good as Jim Lee, of course. But uh, it's a bit more blocky. It's like a, like a blockier version of Jim Lee. Like Jim Lee earlier years, in my opinion. But, um, but it's still good. And I think it was a good uh, change of pace. Uh, at least to maintain, um, you know, because this is how when people leave a, a comic book story unfinished. At least this kind of gives a more uh, semblance of authenticity or maintaining things the same way. Uh, it's hard when you see art changing so drastically. Uh, so I think they accommodate and to bring in Thibbert into it because he was the most, the closest thing they have actually at that time. But here you can see this is another one. This is Sarah's Territory. Uh, I, like again, I said this in other videos. I don't like when the art is like this. Uh, Fabian Iciesa, Art Thibbert again. Uh, I don't like it when they do that nonsense to me. I just like it when I can easy. It's easy for me to uh, read from, in this case, from left to right. And that's just my opinion. But now look at this. Look at Rogue. She looks very pretty. And of course, again, like I mentioned, very blocky. You can see Wolverine very close to the Wolverine from Jim Lee, but a bit more blocky. Uh, you can see that here, more blocky. There's a lot of more square figures. Um, pretty, pretty cool. I, I'm glad that this was added here. Of course, this was not added in any of the collection. It really has nothing to do with Bishop, but it's here just for uh, for those that are completionists and they want to have everything in a, in a single collection. You know, have, have continuity with their collections, which I, I do appreciate. I just hate when um, Marvel or even DC take away some issues just because, according you know, based on their opinion, they're not they're not going with the story. Uh, I like when things continue on. But here you got you have uh, Kevin Nolan's art, Marvel Illustrated Swimsuit issue. This is by Will's Potassium and Scott Williams. Very cool with Cable. Here you have this ladies Marvel Illustrated Swimsuit issue pinup by Mark Silvestri. Mark Silvestri again, one of the best when it comes about a female figure. Again, Will's Potassium, Scott Williams. Now you have uh, June um, Brickman. I'm okay with him. This is a uh, Marvel Suits Special, a uh, pinup by Mike Minola. And uh, again, you know Mark, Mike Minola's are very, very peculiar, very Hellboyish. Uh, now they're beautiful by Marcel Bestry, Tom Smith. Very beautiful there. Joe Jusco, for those that love that kind of stuff, uh, no comments on this one. And, of course, this is the art in the cover. Very, very, very cool. And, of course, here you got the X events that define the generation. You got Fatal Attractions, which I need to review at some point. Uh, the, the Omnibus, in this case. Uh, X-Men Mutant Genesis 2.0, which I already review. Uh, this one, X-Men Executioner's Song, which I need to review. X-Men Extinction Agenda, which I already review. So, this is pretty cool. Now, in conclusion, uh, do I recommend this book? I surely, I surely do. If you're a 90s kid, if you grew up with this character, so you love Bishop, you definitely gonna love it. Now, if you didn't grow up with this character, you may find it boring, and you may find it uh, overinflated, and, and you know, in the in the storyline. Um, this is classic 90s fare. This is not for everyone. Uh, some people would say, oh, you know, we prefer the sophisticated stuff from recent years. I totally disagree. I love this. To me, this is X-Men at its core. You know, it is X-Men at its core. Uh, it's crazy, it's explosive, um, but it was just fun. And uh, it really defined what the 90s was all about. In my opinion, I recommend it. I don't recommend it for everyone. Uh, if you are still set into getting it, even though you're not a fan of the 90s, uh, you know, it's in, I, by all means, do whatever you need to do. But uh, beware that it might not be what you like. But art-wise, definitely it's something that I appreciate because I grew up with it. So I'm sure that whoever grew up with this art and knows Will's Potassio and his story, and uh, I think they, they can appreciate. So what is your opinion? 
uh, please share it with me. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please hit the notification button. Again, all the book reviews are going to go live on Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and of course, they're available to anyone throughout, pretty much throughout the years until Kingdom Come. So uh, thanks for the support. Please consider supporting this channel and the podcast. Uh, you can do that through Patreon. Anything you can do to support this channel, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, five dollars a month or more, um, will really bless this channel, bless me and my family, and it, it will be able. To, I will be able to produce more content, uh, uh, more um, not only weekly but probably daily. So, uh, take care, my friends, and God bless. I'll talk to you again. Bye bye.